Six marriages, six destinies. Henry VIII's queens weren't just wives. They were power players, rebels and victims in a game of love, politics, and even beheadings. From the defiance of Catherine of Aragon to the tragic fall of Anne Boleyn, each woman left in permanent mark on history. Join us as we explore the intriguing stories of Catherine of Aragon, Anne Boleyn, Jane Seymour, Anne of Cleves, Catherine Howard, and Catherine Pyre. Get ready for a journey through Tudor history filled with love, politics, and drama. Catherine of Aragon, Catherine of Aragon, the daughter of King Ferdinand II of Aragon and Queen Isabella of Castile, had her life entwined with England's fate from birth. Engaged to Prince Arthur at the age of three to strengthen alliances, Catherine arrived in England at 15 and married soon after. But tragedy struck when Arthur passed away just six months into their marriage. To maintain the alliance and Catherine's sizable dowry, a daring plan was devised. Marry her to Arthur's younger brother, Prince Henry. However, a religious obstacle stood in the way. Marrying a brother's widow was frowned upon. So, the court sought special permission from the Pope, with Catherine swearing that her first marriage had not been consummated. In 1509, Henry became king and Catherine, known for her grace and political acumen, became queen. At the time of their marriage, Henry was 18 years old and Catherine 23. Initially, their marriage flourished. According to historians, Henry himself has written that his love for his wife was so strong that if he were still free, he would choose her in preference to all others. They shared interests, including learning, religion, and court entertainment. Catherine even acted as regent during Henry's military campaigns and in 1511, they celebrated the birth of a son. But their happiness was short-lived as their son died young. Despite several pregnancies, Catherine only bore one surviving child, a daughter, Mary. As Catherine entered her mid-thirties, Henry's desire for a male heir grew stronger. He wondered if God was punishing him for marrying Catherine. Doubts lingered, and by 1525, Consumed by the need for an heir, Henry sought to annul their marriage, setting the stage for profound changes that would alter England's future. Henry had another reason for wanting to end his marriage to Catherine of Aragon. He had fallen in love. Anne Boleyn. The object of his affections was Anne Boleyn, who had returned to England in 1522 after living in the French court for almost seven years. Although Anne didn't fit the traditional beauty standards of the time, Henry was drawn to her charm, style, and sophistication. They had known each other for four years before their romance began in earnest in 1526. In the early days of their relationship, Henry showed a romantic side that was quite different from his later reputation as a suspicious and cruel ruler. He wrote 17 love letters to Anne, expressing his growing desire for her, his frustration at her refusal to become his mistress, and his desperation to end his marriage to Catherine. By December 1532, Anne had yielded to Henry's advances and became pregnant, which delighted him and added urgency to his efforts to annul his marriage to Catherine. To ensure that their child would be legitimate, Henry married Anne in secret on January 25, 1533, when the Pope refused to annul his marriage, Henry decided to break away from papal authority altogether. Archbishop Thomas Cranmer confirmed the annulment on May 23, and Anne was crowned queen on June 1. Despite Henry's hopes for a son, Anne gave birth to a daughter, Elizabeth, on September 7, 1533. Their relationship was marked by both affection and conflict, described as a tumultuous relationship of sunshine and storms. Anne suffered at least two miscarriages during their marriage, including one in January 1536 that resulted in the loss of a male fetus. Despite her failure to produce a male heir, Henry remained committed to her. However, rumors of her infidelity and plots to undermine her led to her downfall. 
Rumors of her infidelity surfaced after a lady-in-waiting remarked that her own behavior paled in comparison to that of the Queen. As Henry valued chastity in his wives above all else, he instructed his chief minister, Thomas Cromwell, to investigate the matter. Henry warned Cromwell that if the accusations were proven false, Cromwell would face severe consequences. Consequently, by May 1536, Cromwell had uncovered evidence of adultery, incest, and plotting against the king, contributing to Anne's downfall. Anne's execution in May 1536 was a turning point in Henry's life and reign. As Anne faced her tragic demise, Henry, now 45 years old and still without a male heir, had already set his sights on his third wife, Jane Seymour, who had served as Anne's lady-in-waiting. Jane, at 27 years old, was demure, calm, and gentle, contrasting starkly with Anne in both appearance and temperament. Within a day of Anne's death, Henry and Jane were engaged. Historians have extensively debated Jane's influence over Henry. Despite lacking Anne's education and sophistication, Jane was said to possess a quiet determination that allowed her to manage Henry and his frequent fits of anger. When Henry learned of Jane's pregnancy in early 1537, he went to great lengths to ensure her every need was met, including importing quail eggs from France to satisfy her cravings. He spared no expense for the woman he referred to as his one true wife, and his efforts were rewarded with the birth of Edward in October 1537. However, just 12 days later, Henry was plunged into mourning following Jane's death from postnatal complications. After Jane's passing, Henry remained unmarried for two years. However, England's political situation had become precarious without the support of Rome. Recognizing the need for a political alliance, Henry began the search for a new wife, Anne of Cleves. Anne of Cleves, born in 1515, was the daughter of John III, Duke of Cleves, and Maria of Julitburg. Anne's marriage to Henry was arranged as part of a political alliance between England and Cleves, aimed at countering the influence of Catholic powers in Europe. Henry's first encounter with Anne was through a portrait by court painter. The portrait depicted Anne as a handsome and demure woman. However, upon meeting Anne in person, Henry was greatly disappointed. The meeting between Henry and Anne was disastrous. In keeping with chivalric tradition, Henry chose to meet Anne in disguise, expecting her to recognize him as her king and true love. Unfortunately, this plan was not communicated to Anne, who perceived Henry as a lowly servant when he attempted to kiss her. Henry, faced with the realization that he was no longer the youthful prince he once was, felt utterly humiliated. Despite the initial disappointment of their meeting, Anne and Henry agreed to an amicable annulment of their marriage, with Anne receiving a generous settlement and the title of the king's sister. She maintained a cordial relationship with Henry and his subsequent wives, living out her days in England as a respected member of the royal court. Approaching 50, Henry found himself infatuated once again, this time with his 19-year-old lady-in-waiting, Catherine Howard. Catherine, born into a noble family, was the daughter of Lord Edmund Howard, a younger son of Thomas Howard. Catherine was also a cousin of Anne Boleyn. To the aging king, Catherine seemed to embody all the qualities of a perfect queen, obedient, fertile, and chaste. Despite the significant age gap between them, Henry was captivated by Catherine's youthful energy, which momentarily diverted his attention from the constant pain of his ulcerated legs. However, their happiness was short-lived. Just 14 months into their marriage, Henry was devastated when presented with evidence of Catherine's infidelity. On February 13, 1542, Catherine, once cherished by Henry, was executed. Catherine Howard's death left Henry in a deep depression. Without a new wife to distract him, his temper made court a dangerous place. Seeking companionship, Henry married Catherine Pear in 1543 at Hampton Court Palace. 
Catherine had a strong interest in learning and religious reform, quickly becoming influential in Henry's life, caring for his children and attending to his needs. Despite her position, Catherine faced crisis in 1546 when her support for Protestantism led to accusations of heresy. Forewarned, she feigned illness and successfully defended herself when Henry intervened. Henry passed away in January 1547 at the age of 55. Before his death, he ensured Catherine's financial security with an annual allowance of £7,000 and decreed she should be treated with the respect of a reigning queen after his passing. Following Henry's death, Catherine remarried her former love, Thomas Seymour, brother of Jane Seymour. Tragically, Catherine died in childbirth at 36. Although remembered as one of Henry's wives, Catherine holds a unique place in history as England's most married queen, having been married four times. The stories of Henry's six wives offer a fascinating glimpse into Tudor England's courtly drama. From Catherine of Aragon's loyalty to Catherine Parr's intelligence, each woman made her mark on history. If you found this video informative, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more historical content. Leave your comments below and join us as we explore the captivating world of Henry, the Eighth, and his wives. Thanks for watching.